So, in the last uh, four lectures uh, we saw that uh, uh, dimension, how finite dimensional spectral theorem and uh, spectral theorem for uh, compact normal operators uh, look like. So, basically it means that you have an orthonormal basis with respect to which these operators are diagonal right. So, they are called diagonalization procedure if you like. Now, our aim is to go to uh, bounded normal operators and do a spectral theorem for such operators. Now, of course, there are uh, normal operators even self adjoint operators with no eigenvalues. So, you cannot expect the same kind of result it has to be interpreted appropriately and that is what we will do either using projection valued measures or realizing them as multiplication operator. Uh, so, when we reach the spectral theorem I will uh, motivate that uh, and say that uh, you know how how it is analogous to what we already know in the case of finite dimensional case or the compact case and we will see how uh, why such a generalization is is natural ok. But the way we are going to do is uh, via the C star algebra techniques. So, we will start with Banach algebras and then go to C star algebras prove gelfand naimach theorem which is the basic. Uh, result in this which is also quite important uh, which identifies commutative Banach algebras as continuous functions on a compact Hausdorff space and use that theory to develop uh, a projection valued measures and define spectral theorem and def uh, prove spectral theorem for bounded normal operators ok. So, let us start before I get into uh, technical details let me give some references for the last uh, four lectures and for whatever we are going to do now ok all right. So, let us say references on uh, linear algebra done right ok. So, this is by uh, Sheldon Axler by Sheldon Axler. So, this is for the finite dimensional case ok spectral theorem. Uh, it is quite an analytic book uh, and it is also done in a very analytic nice manner and you will have more things there uh, like uh, diagonalizing or spectral theorem for symmetric matrices and things like that ok. Uh, second one for the compact case and so on one can look at the standard text by Conway uh, first course in first course in functional analysis. Okay, or any other book on a uh, functional analysis most of the books uh, will cover uh, spectral theorem for uh, compact normal operators ok. So, that is references for whatever we have done uh, reference for uh, Caesar algebra and the uh, theory thereafter. So, this is what I will be following one is a book by Douglas which is quite quite nice. Uh, this is titled Banach algebra techniques in operator theory quite a lot of nice topics covered in this. Second book is uh, somewhat non standard, but it is quite uh, well written it is a book on harmonic analysis and one chapter is dedicated to spectral theorem. So, this is G B Folland uh, abstract harmonic analysis abstract harmonic analysis. So, it is a book on harmonic analysis uh, you should look at the first chapter that has uh, the uh, sister algebras and spectral theorem ok. Third book uh, does not have sister algebras, but uh, whatever we will do uh, will have a uh, lot of a uh, lot of overlap with whatever is there as a book by Barry Simon. Uh, it is called operator theory 
and this is a this is actually fourth book in a series fourth book in a in a series so Barry Simon recently wrote a series of four books in analysis uh, and the fourth one is the operator theory okay all right so now we are in a position to start uh, with banach algebras and then we will go to uh, sister algebras okay so banach algebras okay <coughs> so let's start with the definition so a uh, banach algebra a script a over c so all our banach spaces uh, and other function spaces or uh, complete spaces hilbert spaces etc will be over the complex numbers always okay so we will not be considering any other field uh, is a is a banach algebra so to start with it is a banach uh, oh over is a oh sorry i should have should have said Banach space. So, a Banach algebra is a Banach space to start with. So, that means the norm norm is given right and it is a complete space with respect to the norm. Uh, so, that is one condition is a Banach space and is an algebra that is multiplication exists that is multiplication exists. So, you can multiply the elements in the Banach space A. So, that would be x comma y going to x dot y right or x x into y. So, I will not write the, the, dot, the dot there. So, it is like A cross A going to A right which satisfies. So, the multiplication has to satisfy the following condition right x y norm is less than to norm x into norm y right for every x comma y in a okay so it's a banach space with a multiplication and the multiplication has to satisfy this uh, norm inequality okay so the norm inequality is interesting because it tells you that the multiplication is actually continuous right it is jointly continuous and if I fix one of the variables you get a operator from A to A right A is a Banach space and whenever you have a multiplication of course, uh, algebra means that multiplication will already respect what is there that is the addition part. So, x plus y so these things are assumed x plus y into z would be equal to x z plus y z right such things are there. So, uh, when I say algebra that is what it is uh, meant right the multiplication respects the addition and there is the uh, you can distribute over addition right. Uh, notice that we are not assuming it is commutative yet ok. So, multiplication need not be commutative that is x y need not be equal to y x alright. Uh, so, this inequality implies that if I fix a point x in A and look at this map y going to x comma y. So, let us say L sub x that is the left multiplication by x is continuous linear right from A to A ok. Similarly, on the right hand multiplication. So, multiplication is continuous is something which is hidden there in that uh, uh, inequality ok. So, let us continue. So, that is the definition of a Banach algebra and then so you would uh, see that it is what we are doing is from a Banach space which was uh, which was a uh, abelian group by addition and so on right vector space addition we have gone to a ring structure ok. Except that uh, the difference between algebraic concept and analytic concept is that we have a norm and completeness with respect to that and the multiplication is continuous with respect to the norm. Okay, so, keep that in mind, but the definitions will follow uh, or imitate whatever is there in algebra ok. So, a Banach algebra A 
A is called unital is called unital. So, unital means it has a unity that is a identity uh, if there exists E in A such that E x equal to x times E uh, equal to x for every x in A right that is what you mean by a unity existing. And so, this is something I will put in uh, the norm of E is always assumed to be 1. Okay. So, depending on the book you look at uh, or the references you look at you may see things slightly different, but they will all lead to the same theory. Okay. The, the, the situation we want to look uh, consider which is the Sistar algebra case these things are always true that norm E will be 1. Okay. And similarly, A is called commutative, it is called commutative if well the multiplication is commutative. So, if x y equal to y x for every x comma y in A right. So, these things which you already know. So, commutativity with respect to multiplication right. So, let us look at one or two examples to sort of understand what kind of objects we are looking at. So, we know a lot of Hilbert spaces, Banach spaces and so on. What we need is spaces with some additional structure where there is multiplication right. So, examples, examples first one. So, let us take a compact Hausdorff space x is compact E 2 and look at C of x. So, that is all continuous functions on x right. So, complex valued continuous functions on x continuous right. What is the norm on this? So, the norm is the supremum norm right supremum over x in x mod f of x. So, you know that this is a Banach space with respect to the supremum norm right f n converging to f uniformly says that f is also um, continuous and so it is a Banach space and uh, it has a natural multiplication right. If I take f and g I know how to multiply them because they are complex valued. So, for f and g in z of x we can define f dot g right at x equal to f x times g x and clearly this is a Banach algebra right. If I take the norm of f g that is less than or equal to norm f into norm g right. So, this is a Banach algebra. Well, so this algebra has the additional um, uh, additional uh, uh, element that which is the identity right. So, note that because it is compact Hausdorff I can take the constant function 1 as the identity. So, note that the constant function constant function 1 is the identity ok. So, let us look at let us slightly modify this let us slightly modify this example <coughs> example ok. So, example 2 take x to be <coughs> locally compact Hausdorff space locally compact ok. So, the next example is take a locally compact Hausdorff space non compact ok. Uh, so, locally compact and non compact. So, like the real line for example and consider consider C naught of x right. What is this? This is all continuous functions uh, vanishing at infinity x to C continuous and vanishing at infinity right. The difference between the earlier example and this example is that this would still be a Banach algebra with respect to the supremum norm right. So, the norm is the supremum norm as earlier, but has no identity ok. So, this is a Banach algebra 
Fenac algebra with no identity. Right, the identity will be the constant function 1, but that is not in C0 of x, right? C0 of x does not vanish at infinity. When x is compact, you have identity. Okay. Third example, slightly different from the one you have seen already, uh, a equal to L1 of R. So, this is all Lebesgue uh, integrable functions on the real line with convolution. So, the product is given by convolution. Okay. In the previous uh, examples, the product was the usual point wise product, right? Here, here it is slightly complicated, it is uh, convolution. So, f times g we will write as f star g. So, what is the convolution? So, this is integral over r f of x minus y g y dy, right? And then one knows that uh, this has the property that if I take the L1 norm this is less than or equal to that follows immediately from uh, Fubini's theorem that this is a, a Banach algebra. So, Banach algebra okay. and uh, it is a fact that it has no identity there are ways of proving it. If you know the Fourier transform then it is just one line otherwise you may have to struggle a little bit. Okay. So, no identity. Okay. So, fourth example again of the same kind instead of L 1 R uh, we look at uh, uh, A to be equal to L 1 of some other space. So, it, it in general you can take L 1 of a topological group, but uh, you know we will not write down anything as general as that. Uh, so, this would be uh, all sequences which are uh, uh, finite right uh, sorry uh, summable. Right. So, let me write it more clearly. So, I look at all doubly infinite sequences etcetera A to etcetera where all A j belong to C right with summation mod A j being finite right j belonging to Z. So, that is your L 1 of z and we can define a uh, convolution here just like we defined in the case of uh, uh, the real line. right? So, I take two sequences A. So, A I write as A 0, A 1, A minus 1 etcetera and I take another one B. Uh, so, I have B 0, uh, B 1, B minus 1 right? this sequence what is A times B? So, A star B is equal to the sequence C, where C is defined to be. So, I should tell you what is uh, nth component of C. So, nth C n is equal to summation A k B n minus k, right? k belonging to Z. That is a convolution of A and B. Okay? Then just like uh, we saw earlier, you can prove that uh, A convolved with B, the L 1 norm is less than or equal to L 1 norm of A times L 1 norm of B. Okay. Okay. But unlike the real line this has a identity okay, with respect to convolution. Okay. So, check that check that delta naught. So, that is 1 0 0 0 and 0 on the left hand side 0 is the identity. Right? As usual if the identity exists it has to be unique. Right? So, this is the 0th place that is uh, one more example. So, maybe the last one. Okay? So, all this you can see that is commutative. Right? All the uh, examples we have so, uh, seen so far is commutative. So, let me here these are all product wise uh, point wise product they are all commutative obviously f into g is g into f. Uh, in the th third example where it is convolution f convolved with g is g convolved with f. Okay. So, you can also check this by change of variable and so they are all commutative similarly for L 1 of z. Right? So, 
an example of a non commutative uh, Banach algebra is uh, bounded operators on a Hilbert space. Okay. So, B of H. So, this is bounded operators bounded operators on, on a Hilbert space. This is of course, with respect to the operator norm right. So, we know that if I have two operators T and S then norm of T S is less than to norm of S and that says it is a Banach algebra and it need not be commutative right. So, non commutative non commutative Banach algebra with identity right. So, unital Banach algebra. Okay. So, we have several examples of uh, naturally occurring uh, Banach algebras, we will study them in general before we get into anything more. So, let us let us start the study of uh, Banach algebras. Okay. So, some most of this uh, the initial part you would have seen in some form or the other either in algebra or in analysis, uh, but we will go through them. Okay. So, let us start with the lemma. So, let script A be a unital Banach algebra, unital Banach algebra uh, if, if x is in A uh, is such that such that norm of x is less than 1. So, norm of x is strictly less than 1, then E minus x is invertible. E remember is the identity in x in A and E minus x is invertible. This is something you have seen in the case of linear algebra or maybe operators the operators and so on right. I minus t is invertible if norm t is less than 1 and whatever you do in uh, a with with the function 1 by 1 minus t where t is less than modulus t less than 1 you expand right it is the same proof is invertible that is. So, what is invertible invert because you have a multiplication you invertibility makes sense right. So, that is there exists an element in the Banach algebra such that y times e minus x equal to e minus x times y equal to 1 right. So, I am not assuming it to be commutative yet. So, one has to put in both the conditions okay. and e minus x inverse. So, that is my y equal to summation n equal to 0 to infinity x to the n. Okay. So, here x to the 0 is of course, identity. Right. So, that is e plus x plus x square plus x cube plus etcetera etcetera right. That is what you do when you uh, expand 1 by 1 minus t where t between 0 and 1 it is 1 plus t plus t square plus t cube etcetera right. The same proof works here ok. So, I will just write down one step. So, first of all notice that this uh, infinite series converges because norm x is strictly less than 1. So, this is an absolutely summable series in a Banach space. So, it will converge to an element okay, that is my y which is the inverse of e minus x. Okay. Now, how do you prove uh, this? So, this is just uh, more or less straightforward. What you do is you multiply e minus x with the partial sums of uh, this the series. So, n equal to 0 to k uh, x to the n right and then you see that this is uh, nothing but um, everything gets cancelled and then uh, you get e minus x to the k plus 1 or something like that right and k x to the k plus 1 goes to 0 because norm x is strictly less than 1 right. So, that will do. So, that is a proof right. So, this will converge to the right hand side will converge to 1 and that proves that e minus x into y is uh, e and similarly the other way ok. All right. So, let us uh, let us continue. So, we know that uh, if norm x is less than 1 e minus x, x is going to be invertible. So, now let me write down a theorem so that uh, so let us take some space for it theorem let a be a unital Banach algebra. 
unique tell bana ga algebra okay uh, if again these are things which you have seen in linear algebra or or, or when you studied functionals this uh, and most of the proofs are same okay if mod lambda is greater than or equal to norm x then lambda e minus x is invertible invertible and its inverse is inverse is well if you know how to expand you will immediately see that it is uh, lambda to the minus n minus 1 x to the n ok. So, b if x is invertible if x is invertible in a and norm y is less than or equal to norm x inverse inverse ok. So, yeah maybe I should say strictly less than strictly less than then x minus y is invertible x minus y is invertible. See if x is invertible x is invertible and norm y is less than or equal to half times norm x inverse inverse then well from the uh, previous statement it is clear that x minus y is invertible, but we have a little bit more x minus y to the inverse minus x inverse that is less than or equal to 2 times norm x inverse square norm y ok. The last one the set of invertible elements set of invertible elements in A form an open set form an open set in A and the map x going to x inverse. So, that is defined on the set of invertible elements is continuous ok. So, that is the basic theorem we will start with let me repeat let A be a unital Banach algebra if mod lambda is greater than norm x. So, that means lambda is large enough then lambda e minus x is invertible, but that is something which you have already seen in some form or the other you take the lambda out you will have e minus x by lambda and then x by lambda will have very small norm. So, it will be invertible right. So, second one is important if x is invertible and if norm y is small right. So, x inverse is an element in A and I am looking at x inverse norms inverse right. So, that is some positive quantity, but let us say small. So, if norm y is small then x minus y is invertible. So, if x is invertible you can perturb x a little bit and you will still be in the set of invertible elements and that is why the last one the set of invertible elements in A is uh, open ok. Continuity follows from uh, the statement in C that if x is invertible and norm y is smaller than what we have assumed in C right half times uh, x inverse of inverse. Then what you have is x minus y inverse minus x inverse. So, if you look at the map if you call the map x going to x inverse uh, to be f what we are looking at is f of uh, x minus y minus f of x and that is bounded by something right that is the Lipschitz continuity of the map uh, f. Uh, and consequently we have this uh, set of invertible elements in A to be an open set and the map x going to x inverse uh, to be continuous. In fact, uh, not just continuous it is much more we will not uh, get into that, but this is something you would have seen in the case of uh, say matrices and so on uh, during studying the uh, several variable calculus for example, when the matrix is invertible and so on right. Uh, it is the same proof. Okay, so, we will stop here and then we will take up the proof in the next lecture.